Hey folks, so I'm sure most of you are aware by now that two missiles uh, two missiles have struck within Poland and for a while there there was a lot of speculation and a lot of uh, insinuation that these were Russian missiles. Russia came out and denied having any involvement in the missile strikes. Uh, there was a, a lot of prepper channels were pounding the fear drum uh, about this could be what sets off World War III. Uh, that NATO was having an emergency meeting and there was invoking Article uh, Article 4, Article 5. I, I'm tired. I can't remember if it's Article 4 or Article 5. Anyway, the uh, the defense clause in, of NATO. So, there was a lot of speculation that NATO was going to uh, invoke that and there was going to be an immediate response. Now, I saw this from several uh, prepper channels. And... Uh, some you would expect it from. Others aren't usually inclined to spread or to, I don't want to say spread fear, but inclined to uh, be dramatic about things. But everybody immediately jumped to the conclusion that Russia fired these missiles, they strayed off course, or uh, and struck NATO or, or struck Poland and uh, there was speculation that it could be because of the Polish uh, mercenaries that are in Ukraine right now other people were saying NATO was uh, about to they were having an emergency meeting they were about to declare a war uh, you know we can go back and forth over what happened who fired the missiles and what it means I, I think a few hours later Biden is, is saying it's unlikely Russia fired the missiles Russia is denying any involvement in it uh, NATO and Poland are now according to the articles that I've read saying that these were Ukrainian missiles that entered Poland accidentally. But this just goes to show how uh, tensions are so high right now that it wouldn't take much to set off a powder keg. I mean, it, Ukraine right now is a powder keg, and it wouldn't take much to set off a global war. Uh, all, all it takes is missiles being fired in the wrong direction, uh, a m malfunction with missiles, causing them to veer off in, into the wrong place. Uh, suppose those missiles had hit U.S. troops or NATO troops. Now, it, there were casualties from these uh from these missiles and that's unfortunate it's really unfortunate but I don't think this is the catalyst that a lot of people were looking for it to be again there was a lot of speculation that this was going to be what was going to send us into World War 3 open world war uh, I think there was some speculation as well that it could either be a false flag or Russia could have fired these missiles and then refused to uh, accept responsibility for whatever reason. Oh, I'm sorry, folks. Uh, but I think it's safe to say that as much as a lot of prepper channels and news media wanted to make this into the big event that sent everybody into World War III. I don't think it is. 
uh, whether or not Russia had anything to do with it, whether or not it was uh, a misfire or a malfunction, I can't say. But it's, it's my belief that this may, I mean, this could have been a few uh, a few people firing missiles towards Poland thinking that would actually get troops, NATO troops, involved in helping defend Ukraine. So, I mean, there's that possibility. We have to look at all the possibilities here, but... I don't think this is something to panic over like a lot of other channels intended or implied. It's something to be aware of, to understand what's going on, understand the tension there. But we can't react out of fear. And if you if you try to react out of fear, your first reaction is going to be, oh, this is they're attacking NATO, we need to respond. And if, if this truly was a malfunction and an accidental strike, which is highly, I mean, that's possible, it's very possible, then that reaction could, uh, could be very un, uh, unfortunate because it could cause a lot of suffering for no reason and and things like that are bound to happen when you have a global conflict or tensions about a global conflict like we have right now with Ukraine and Russia everybody is on edge uh, everybody's on edge about Poland is extremely on edge about Russia invading them or attacking them It's just, it's not a good situation. And we need to make sure that we understand when something like this happens, we need to make sure we understand what happened before we respond. That way we respond rationally and with good understanding of what happened. You don't want to react out of emotion, particularly out of fear. Because that can cause an escalation that, in other words, could could be avoided. So, uh, this is all over the news right now. Uh, it's all over Prepper channels. I wanted to give you my thoughts on it. I don't think it's anything serious. I don't think it's anything to worry about. That, uh, that one big event could still happen. I just don't think this is it. Uh... So, I stand by what I, I put out in my previous video that we need to be prepping for our personal SHTF events over the larger global events that a lot of people are focused on. You know, it's all... In the prepper community, it's fun, it's glamorous, it's entertaining to talk about all these big events the economic collapse civil war uh world war three nuclear war these are the big things everybody loves to talk about and they love to use these as events to prep for when in in reality you should be prepping for the thing that is most likely to happen to you as an individual and in my case that that would be Right now, that would be job loss, um, followed by power outages or a local disaster of some sort. Uh, it wouldn't be World War III or uh, nuclear Armageddon. Again, you know, if you prep for these things that are most likely to happen to you, uh, you're already building the foundation of being prepared for the much larger, less likely uh, disasters or events that could take place. So, 
again, I stand by what I said yesterday. Prep for your safety, your security from the things that pose the greatest threat to you as an individual and as your family. Um, those events, job loss, loss of your home due to a storm or a fire, uh, loss of a loved one, the hospitalization or extended illness or injury of a loved one, um, the loss of a vehicle to get back and forth to work, things like that, those are the disasters you really need to be prepping for. If you prep for those, that preparation is going to translate further up the scale to these larger events and help you be more resilient in the event something much bigger and uh, wider range of effectiveness if that happens. So, yeah, I, I still stand by my previous video on that. All right, that's all I've got with this. This is going to be a real short one uh, because I'm going to be following this up with a, another Tac Pack Flashbox Friday video. I just got it in. I want to open it up. It's been a long day, so I want to have a little bit of fun. Uh, so I'm going to follow this up and I'm going to do that and I'm going to upload the videos. Uh, I hope you got something useful out of this. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Like, share, subscribe if you haven't. And until next time, just stay safe, keep prepping, take care of yourselves. And until next time, folks, I'll catch you later.